was recently stung by a yellow jacket, and it threw me for a loop. I was confused, betrayed, sad, as if a friend just hurt me. See, I am someone who advocates for all nature, someone who believes that there is a balance in nature and in turn a purpose and an importance to all living things. The tropic cascade phenomenon, for instance, if there were no wolves, for example, would be the cause for less deer to be hunted. So the deer become weaker because they are moving less and staying in one area more often, grazing on plants more heavily in one location, making it harder for those plants to fully recover before the next migration. And along with that, the ground becomes less aerated, making it harder for it to retain the water needed for the growth of the plant life. With no wolves, comes more coyotes, hunting more rodents, and leaving less food for the birds like the eagles and hawks. One little piece of the puzzle and it impacts everything around it, much like a cascading waterfall. It starts out a calm stream, but as it nears the edge, it starts to rage with energy. Once over the edge, it makes its way to the rocks below it, and with its turbulent force, it splinters a boulder, causing the water to split and form more waterfalls. And now those waterfalls affect the things below it, creating a cascading or rippling effect all around it. That is how all living things live. We think we do something and it only affects what our eyes can see, but it has the ability to affect everything. So I believe there is a purpose to all nature, Nature does things to survive. They don't kill for sport. They kill to put food on the table. They aren't blatantly mean for no reason. They are mean because they feel threatened for some reason or because they are hungry. That brings me back to my bee sting. I decided to research why yellow jackets sting for no reason. I mean, I was just sitting in my vehicle and ouch, God damn it, what the fuck? I wasn't going after you. I wasn't near your home. I wasn't threatening you in any way. I had done nothing and yet this bee just seemed to come out of nowhere and hurt me. I just couldn't believe that nature would purposely hurt something for no reason. It didn't make sense to me. I mean, think about it. You're buzzing around, doing your job, making your queen happy. When you get scared, yeah, you punch someone in the face with your stinger and try to get as far away as possible, but you're not just buzzing around looking for a human as if that was your sole purpose of your life. It's a human for crying in the rain, and humans aren't even on your list of least favorite foods, let alone foods you regularly eat. So why? Why, B, did you hurt me? Well, when I was doing my research on this, I found out that firstly, yellow jackets, they're pollinators like honeybees. They do have a purpose. Secondly, I found out that their predators or the part of nature that keeps yellow jackets in check are small mammals like skunks, bears, moles, shrews, and badgers. The less small mammals we have, the larger that yellow jackets population can get. The third thing was that as yellow jackets population goes up, the more food they need. And when they start running out of food, they start to starve. And when they start to starve, they become angry, much like people can when they are hungry. I think they call the term hangry. So essentially those yellow jackets are starting to get hangry in the fall. Now this is late summer here in Colorado, but Maybe their hangry season is getting longer because their population is getting much larger. Less vegetation, less food, less predators equals more population and a recipe for a lot more hangry bees. But this leads me to another thought. Why do they have to be mean? Being angry isn't going to get them more food. It isn't going to stop them from starving. Well, unless my knee jerk reaction causes their demise, Whoops. So what is the point to getting angry? Did it solve the problem? Did it make it feel better about starving? I doubt it. But then again, why do I get angry? And has it ever truly benefited me? Yes, in a life and death situation, but even then, 
Wouldn't it be better to have a clear mind so that I could think and come up with the best and quickest solutions? I don't know about you, but when I'm angry, it's like this dense black smoke consumes my mind and whatever made me angry has become the main focus. Tunnel vision has taken over and I cannot see anything around me except for my target. Nothing else matters. And thinking straight? Oh, that's definitely out of the question. That, my friends, has always led me to do and say things I have regretted. So why get angry? Someone doesn't see things the way I do, doesn't live the way I do, doesn't agree with me. How will anger change those things? Have you ever gotten angry at someone and your anger magically changed the situation in your favor? Have you ever gotten so mad that it changed someone's personality before your eyes? How has anger truly benefited me? For most things, it hasn't. As a matter of fact, it has caused most bad things in my life, whether it was directed at me or vice versa. What if there was a way to redirect that energy into a different emotion? What if we could write new code in our consciousness that redirects the energy into an area we can make more use of? Instead of certain situations infuriating me into a state of rewind and replay, I channel that energy into creating. It becomes my muse, I controlling it instead of it controlling me. In lieu of anger, which usually only attracts negativity, like flies to shit, I move that energy into a place that inspires something good. Maybe I channel that energy into my motivation to work out. That in turn helps me to stay physically healthy in more ways than one. Maybe I move the path of the energy into the ability to create an invention that changes the world, the future, for the better. I know there are probably many out there that believe we have to get angry, but do we? Do I? But if you let anger fester and build up, it will only create disease. You have to get it out. Sure, but why can't we transform or evolve that energy into coming out of us as something more productive that creates a better outcome for us and those around us? First, I need to explore myself. When am I getting angry? What is making me angry? How much of my day do I spend being angry? How many days a week? How many months a year? And what good has it done? How many people has it changed for the better? How has the world become better for it? Was it wasted energy and wasted time? For me, a lot of it is. There are so many other things I could have used that energy towards. Writing, painting, working out, creating, learning. Stop! Ugh. Oh, I'm so angry. Why am I getting angry? Is it going to change the outcome of the situation for the better or make it worse? Well, probably make it worse. Will it change the person I'm talking to? Probably not. What could I do instead? Where could I move that energy that would create something better? <sighs> Energy rerouted to focus, motivation, and inspiration. Taking me into the shoes of someone who experiences peace and happiness more often. Someone whose anger count is at an all-time low because it is only needed in extreme situations. But maybe not even then, because I think I might prefer strength and wisdom in most cases. Did that yellow jacket sting me because it was... Hangry? It seems very possible, as much as I don't want to believe it. Did being hangry get him food? Then why not evolve and put that energy to better use? Well, maybe I need to take a dose of my own medicine. Maybe I'm part of that tropic cascade phenomenon. If I change me for the better, it will have a trickle-down effect to those around me and nature, which eventually, whatever energy I'm perpetuating, will find its way full circle back to myself. Remember, energy never ceases to exist. It just moves from one thing to the next. 
how I am as a person, my personality, and how I live has a cascading effect to those around me, which affects those around them, and it just keeps going. How can I expect a bee to change its ways when I, the supposedly more intelligent species, refuses? My change for the better will hopefully create a new cascade of positive energy where we can explore a world one day that has found more balance, less anger, and more peace. To explore nature and balance first means to explore why I react the way I do. How can I channel my negative energy into something positive? Well, the possibilities are endless.